Hey there, this is Jason. I uh, have a question that is essentially um, are hypopneas less a concern when compared to sleep apnea, um, whereas you completely stop breathing. Really the best way to describe this uh, is to actually just show you. So here we're on a fantastic website for epcpepadvice.com forward slash forum. If you're not a member, you should join. All right, we're switching over. This is a all night polysomnogram. Polysomnograph a polysomnographic test. This is a sleep test. Um, what I have pulled up here is a hypopnea. So let's look at what the hypopnea does. Um, so it looks like everything's in frame. Um, this is a two minute window. Um, so this section here uh, is approximately 20 seconds or so. Um, you can see the hypopnea, what it is. This is P flow here, if you follow across. You can see how it's big and then it's shallow, 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 and it gets much larger here. Um, same with these respiratory effort belts here and here. They get, they're larger, then they get small, 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 and then everything peaks right here. You can see a leg moves. You can see the blood oxygen level goes from 95 as a high down to, it says 91, but right here is actually 90. So it's dropping 5%. And then you can see this is the EEG right here, and you can see that it's really speeding up. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can see how this is it right here, the hypopnea, zoomed into 30 seconds, and you can see that they're sleeping, this is all slow, and then bam, they're waking up here, all the EEG speeding. And then you can actually even see a little bit of snoring right there. Um, if I make it a little bigger, you can see the snoring. Hypopnea, not good, right? Um, if we look at the heart, you can also see it's difficult to see, but you can see for this period here, the heart is actually speeding up a little bit. Um, so that is indicative of hypopnea. You have a desaturation of 4% or greater. Uh, you don't always have to, but an arousal is usually associated like that. Like here you can see a rear, uh, if I scroll forward, here's another hypopnea. That's even a, a, a larger arousal. And the desaturation goes down to 98, or I'm sorry, to 89. Um, so obviously this is detrimental to your sleep. So is this worse than, a sl than sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea? Well, here's a bunch right there, but there was one over here I liked better. So here's an obstructive sleep apnea. So what does it have in common with a hypopnea is basically everything uh, with the exception of, I mean, you can see right here, the abdominal belts. I mean, they're trying to breathe, trying to breathe. We have... Uh, blood oxygen level dropping from 96 down to 88. Um, we have a larger arousal, though that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with this specific apnea or apneas in general. Um, it just happens to be this one has a larger arousal. See the legs move. Basically, the only difference between these is you have a complete flattening of the breathing. So there's absolutely no air getting in. Whereas with the hypopnea, some air is getting in. We also see right here, the heart is speeding up a little bit. Um, here's another obstructive apnea. Same thing, desaturation, awakening. They happen to be in REM here. Um, heart speeds up, blood oxygen drops. And here's another, here's a hypopnea. So we see that there's some air getting through here. Increase that a little bit so you can see it better. Um, a little air getting through. Hold on. A little air getting through. Decrease in the belts. Desaturation of 96 all the way down to 86. That's a 10% desaturation. You see an awakening here. If I were to zoom in on that, you can see them, the speeding here in the channel. They wake up and they go right back to sleep. Now, when I say they wake up, this isn't something like you wake up, you scratch your head, look around. It's, uh, it's very brief. It's a micro arousal. So you're technically waking up. It's technically disturbing your sleep, but it's nothing that you would really remember per se. So if I were to have to be nailed down on which one is worse between the hypopnea and an obstructive apnea, I would not even kind of be able to answer it. Because to me, they're the exact same thing, which is, in my opinion, why they're both included in the apnea hypopnea index. Um, they're, to me, they're weighted the exact same. They both disrupt your sleep. They both cause... SpO2 desaturations, they both increase your risk of, you know, heart disease, uh, high blood pressure, stroke. Um, 
while we're at it, what about RIRAs, respiratory effort related arousals? What does this have in common with the hypopnea or the obstructive apnea? Well, it has the arousal, it has a decrease in airflow, it has the increase in heart, although this one doesn't look quite as, as obvious as the others. Um, you know, the awakening, there is a, still a desaturation, but this is only going from 94 down to 92, even though there's a clear, I mean, look how big this first breath is and then it decreases. So the only reason this guy, whoops, the only reason the Rira isn't being called a hypopnea is because it's desaturation isn't 4% or more. Other than that, it's the exact same. Um, so to me, they're all important. They all disrupt sleep. Uh, they all cause problems with daytime sleepiness during the day. Um, the overall decreased quality of life. Um, so to me, they're all important. I don't really weight them one more than the other. The problem I see is that uh, is actually with these RERAs. Um, Medicare doesn't uh, count them. They don't count the RDI, which is the only place that the RERA is going to show up. They're not counted in the apnea hypopnea index or AHI because it's not an apnea or a hypopnea. So Medicare won't acknowledge these. You could have an apnea hypopnea index below the threshold of five. Uh, you may have an apnea hypopnea index of three with a respiratory disturb disturbance index, an RDI of 60. And I see this quite often and they will be denied treatment, um, which is, you know, Medicare is asleep at the wheel again. Um, so this is just kind of an education uh, into what makes one sleep disorder breathing event worse than the other. And to me, again, they're basically all equal. Well, isn't that just doom and gloom? So <laughs> hopefully you learned something from this. Um, this is from my home sleep testing service, uh, AXG Sleep Diagnostics LLC. Um, and... Uh, that's it. If you know anyone that needs a test, I would love the referral. Um, other than that, hopefully this was insightful. I know a lot of people don't get to see a home sleep test or any like sleep disordered breathing, any, um, I'm sorry, not sleep disordered breathing, uh, any raw waves. So it's kind of uh, interesting sometimes. Anyway, if you have any questions, please uh, visit my forum or visit my website, freesleepadvice.com or freesleepadvice.com forward slash forum. Thanks.